How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are going to be looking at the Delta tilde and Edge tilde object. These objects are so super useful for doing audio processing in Max MSP because they let us get a bang from an audio signal. And we know that bangs in Max MSP control everything, so being able to get a bang from an audio object is a very valuable technique. Uh, and it's actually super, super easy to do. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we actually need to start with our phaser ramp. We talked about this in the last video. With a phaser ramp, you can set the base for so much audio processing stuff in Max MSP, including this technique. So if we just start with our phaser and we give it a hertz to six, that's a nice speed, and we'll be able to actually see our phaser in our live.scope tilde object. It visualizes an audio signal, so if we just patch our outlet into its inlet and turn our audio driver on by clicking this audio symbol right there, you're gonna see our phaser is now running and we have that sawed wave signal. It's going from zero to one at a speed of six hertz, which is exactly what we want. So next we're going to create our delta tilde object. Now the delta tilde object gives you a signal value of the sample difference. What does that mean? What it means is it's just going to take the incoming audio signal and it's going to subtract it from the previous audio signal. So we are getting the difference in those two samples. And if we just patch our phaser into the delta just like that, and then we copy our live.scope object, which I'm going to do by holding down the option key and clicking and dragging so we get a nice clean copy. We can then patch the output of our delta tilde object into that live.scope object, and you're going to see these spikes um, to the value of negative one. Why is that happening? Well, that is the difference in our phaser ramp. At every single sample, we are taking the new value and subtracting the previous value which gives us a value of essentially zero, maybe like 0 0.00001 or something, because it's just so small, that difference, every step along this phase of ramp, until we get to the end of the ramp, where it ramps around from one back down to zero. If you take zero and you subtract one, you're gonna get negative one, which is that spike. That negative one spike is happening every time we loop back around in the phaser, because zero minus one is negative one. But that's okay. We actually wanna use that to our advantage. Um, the fact that we get such a large jump at that moment tells us when we're at the end of the ramp, which is very valuable timing information for when we want to use the edge object to create the bang. All we're going to do now is we're going to set a threshold value to turn this from a negative one into a positive one. It's actually very easy. We're just gonna say less than or equal to tilde because we're dealing with audio objects, less than or equal to tilde, and we're gonna say zero. And that is because negative one is less than zero. And if we just patch our delta into that, again, copy this by holding down the option key, clicking and dragging. You can also control C, control V if you'd like. You see now we are getting a positive value, and that's because negative one is less than zero. And since that is a true statement, it's going to return a positive one at every spike instead of a negative one. A lot of different ways you could flip these values around. I just like that. And we're just also now going to create our edge object, which is going to detect logical signal transitions, and it's gonna give us a bang for each of those logical transitions. You see this left outlet is output on zero to non-zero, and this one is output on non-zero to zero. So you can think of it as like a rising and falling. If we are moving from zero to one, we're gonna get a bang out of here. If we're moving from one to zero, then we'd get a bang out of the right outlet. In this instance, uh, we want that bang from zero to one because that is the step of this spike, a zero to a non-zero value, which again, matches with when this phaser loops around. So if we just patch the output of our threshold object into the edge out of this left outlet, we are now going to get a bang every single spike and we can see that happening um, if you want to create a button you just press b and so from that we now can do anything in max msp <laughs> because uh everything is controlled by a bank so just have this precise uh audio based timer to create bangs is really useful for a lot of different reasons especially if you're trying to do timing things um 
with audio signals for your own synthesizer. And if you adjust the phaser ramp, you'll see you're adjusting the speed of the bang. So everything just stays nice and succinct and in time. And that's really it. That's the whole tutorial. But let's just make something really quick and fun with this bang. And we could do that really fast and easy. If we create a cycle object that's going to give us a sine wave, we can then create a scale object. Just make sure to add the tilde to it because we're dealing with audio signals. And we're going to scale from 0 to 1, which is our phaser ramp. And we're going to scale that out to 280 to 880 because that is an A note and one of its octaves. So we'll do that, patch our phaser into the sc scale and patch the scale into the cycle. And then if we pull up a case slider real quick, um, this is a nice piano interface user object to click MIDI notes and MIDI note values. Um, and I believe this lower value is 36. So we're gonna say random 36 and we're gonna add 36 to it. Uh, so the possible, the lowest possible MIDI note we can now select will be this one and 36 above it, which is somewhere over here. It's that note, so another C. And we're gonna take these values that are MIDI values and we're gonna convert them to a frequency using the M2F object. It takes a MIDI number and converts it to a frequency. And if we do that and we multiply by two, we'll get a value to be something like this, which we can set to our high range. So our phaser will scale its zero to one to be a new frequency value that is a note and its octave. And if we just take this bang from the edge, and patch that into the random. Every time this phaser loops, it's going to output a new random MIDI value to scale between, which will give us a new note every time that phaser ramp loops, which that's super cool. And let's just patch that into our audio output so we can hear it. And that's that. <laughs> that's pretty fun to play with. I hope this tutorial was clear. I hope you guys see the value and power of the delta and edge object. And I hope everything makes sense. If things do make sense, please remember to like and subscribe because that is the best way I know that you guys learned something from this video. If there are any questions about anything, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer them. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.